κόσμων των διδάσκαμε ότι, ότι η Εκκλησία ενδιαφέρεται για την ελευθερία του και υπέβαλε κατά έναν τρόπο στην κυβερνώσα δύναμη αυτών των πόθων. Και λέγαμε στον λαό μην επιστός σε δύο πράγματα, στον Χριστό και την Ελλάδα. The Greek Cypriots, led by their church, longed to be free of foreign rule. But they dreamed not of independence, but of union with their motherland, what they called Enosis. Enosis means the union of, it's a Greek word for, for the union of Cyprus with Greece. For the Greek Cypriots, it's something of the heart. We have exactly the same characteristics as the other as the other Greek nation. We have the same language, the same religion, the same culture, the same civilization. We are therefore Greeks. But the British would not give up the island to Greece. They thought Cyprus vital to their military needs in the Middle East. They found support from the Turkish Cypriots, the other 20% of the island's population, who, fearing domination by the Greeks, preferred to stick with British rule. And as Cyprus was more prosperous than Greece, the British could see no advantage for the Cypriots in Enosis. The Cypriots did not deny the benefits the British had brought. They had established law, planted forests, covered the island with roads. But this was all beside the point. They wanted to join Greece. And in Cyprus, unlike other colonies, the British had not brought democracy. Well, of course, our British rule here was autocratic. Uh, but a, a benevolent autocracy. Uh, we did the best we could uh, for the island in the difficult circumstances in which we were, uh, were placed. Um, the uh, system of, of administration um, uh, uh, had to be governed by the political uh, impasse in the, in the island and the fact that um, uh, the Greek Cypriots were not prepared to um, uh, take part in self-government, representative self-government, meant that we really had no choice. The British had offered Cyprus its own parliament in 1947. The Greek Cypriots would have nothing to do with it. They wanted only union with Greece. They were taught from childhood to desire enesis. The British had left education in the hands of teachers from mainland Greece. This had proved a mistake. I remember when I was a student, windows were closed so that they would not hear us from outside, and the teacher was teaching us the, uh, the Greek national anthem. And while he was teaching us, tears were coming, uh, uh, were, were running down from his eyes. And uh, we were also very moved. This was the way we were brought up. The British tried to stop the teaching of Enesis. They made it a crime. But the church found ways to get round the law. Και είπα, αφού μαζεύτηκαν όλοι οι κοινότητες, απόψε κύριοι ήρθαμε στο χωριό σας για να κηρύξουμε την επανάσταση. Ζήτω η επανάσταση. Το επανέλαβα δύο, τρεις φορές. Όλος ο λαός εχειροκροτούσε, εφώναζε, η αστυνομία προχώρησε να εκτελέσει αυτό που με είχε στην αρχή απειλήσει, να με συλλάβει. Όταν επλησίασε, εγώ προσέθεσα. Ήρθαμε να κηρύξουμε την επανάσταση ενάντια στην αμαρτία. Τότε πάγωσαν, σταμάτησαν και επεχώρησαν. Και εγώ μίλησα ενάντια στην αμαρτία. Βέβαια, στο τέλος ομιλίας μίλησα και εθνικά. Η αστυνομία όχι μόνο δεν προσήλθε να με συλλάβει, αλλά πρώτη εχειροκροτούσε. In January 1950, in every Orthodox church in Cyprus, the congregation was presented with a petition for union with Greece. The church announced that this plebiscite showed 96% of Greek Cypriots were in favor of Enesis. The British took little notice of this plebiscite or its organizer, the newest bishop, Makarios. A few months later, 
Makarios was archbishop. At 37, leader of the order. Um, they are in the streets, waiting the pamphlets which were circulated by Grivas that day. If our rulers refuse to give us back our freedom, we shall claim it with our own hands and with our own blood. <laughs> Aoka, the leader, Degenis. And talking about the explosions, there was another atmosphere, really. I felt uh, just that I had to do it. Uh, I, I had to fight for the freedom of my country. It was a strong feeling, really. I couldn't be out. What you need to be a member of this organization was that you must be, at that time, uh, a right wing, belong to the right wing party. I mean, right wing, you are all except the leftists. The communists. I mean, they check your character. I mean, let's say if you were going around in bars, drinking or uh, having affairs with people that didn't, I mean, have a good name, they wouldn't choose you to be a member of the organization. You must have a good character. Ήταν παιδιά που εξομολογούν το τακτικά, εκκοινωνούσαν τακτικά. Και το μυρμήκι να το σκοτώσουν δεν το ήθελα. Όταν όμως εκλήθησαν στον αγώνα, φυσικά έκαναν το καθήκον τους. Και έγραψαν την ωραιότερη σελίδα της ιστορίας της Κύπρου. Έχω ορκίσει πάρα πολλούς νέους. I swear in the name of the Holy Trinity that I shall work with all my power for the liberation of Cyprus from the British yoke, sacrificing for this even my life. You have to take a Bible and put your hand on it and, and take the oath. You keep your secret. You tell nothing to anybody, not to your parents, not to your relatives, not to anybody. If you betray your uh, friends, you are a traitor. And it was very difficult for somebody who betrayed his country. They would kill you or, uh, I mean, you could not come out of that. To their parents, Aoka's secret recruits were still just children. Uh, I had a problem uh, with my relatives, uh, more uh, with my father, that um, he, he thought that I was a moral person, a moral girl, because I used to go out with men. And uh, after I asked uh, my leader of my district, to, to break the oath and say to my father that uh, uh, I fight for my country and not uh, just to amuse myself. And when I told him, he was so uh, glad and uh, moved that he gave me uh, his blessing. It is Yoka which is preventing you, the people of Cyprus, from governing yourself. Harding set out to crush Aoka. He believed that when he had freed the Cypriots from the terrorist threat, new moderate leaders would come forward to help him govern Cyprus. Harding's first step was to strengthen the police, now thoroughly infiltrated by Aoka. He created an auxiliary police force, recruited from the 20% minority of the population, the Turkish Cypriots. We were against Aoka. Britain was against AOCA. Therefore, we had uh, a joint interest in seeing that AOCA did not succeed. Uh, the only thing on which I insisted very strongly uh, with uh, Marshal Harding was that the auxiliary police would uh, bring about uh, very serious frictions between uh, the Greek majority and the Turkish minority and uh, then create a situation which would be absolutely uh, insoluble because of the strifes which would occur between Greeks and Turks. We couldn't uh, bring a whole horde of policemen from elsewhere in to do duties of, uh, of that kind. And so really it w we had no choice in the, in the matter. Aoka began its struggle against the British, not the Turkish Cypriots. But as Turks became Britain's law enforcers, they too became Aoka targets. Some said it was deliberate British policy to set Greek against Turk 
and divide and rule. I don't think that it's fair to read great political significance uh, into the, uh, the action. It was uh, simply a, a normal part of the security uh, operation. Certainly it's true that uh, perhaps as, as we were forced to, t to rely more and more uh, on the Turkish Cypriots, um, it became um, more and more important that we shouldn't alienate them. We simply couldn't afford, of course, to fight a battle here in Cyprus on, on both fronts against both Greeks and Turks. <laughs> Harding introduced tough emergency laws. He punished whole villages with collective fines and curfews for protecting Aoka men. To the Cypriots, it seemed like the end of British justice, which they had enjoyed for more than 70 years. Troops and police rounded up suspect after suspect. Thousands were detained without trial, some for months. But suspects had to be made to talk. They took me to the special branch. They took off all my clothes. They tapped me by the back, my hands and back, my foot, and uh, they beat me for a lot. Then mm. they asked, uh, somebody came, I mean a Cypriot came, a Cypriot officer who started beating me. Uh, he was always either drunk or taking drugs. Uh, he was really mad with me. He was crying one time. He was laughing the other time. I mean, he was a man unbalanced. Uh, he was uh, taking um, a stick to put in my bottom. He was taking some cloth, uh, put in the water, and then put it in my in my in my face so that not to breathe. He was uh, he threw me down and he started dancing on my my my, my stomach with. He was wearing boots. Nikos Koshis described 12 days of torture before interrogators abandoned efforts to make him talk. Many Cypriots made similar allegations of torture by the British and those who worked for them. Athens Radio broadcast every charge. And in the House of Commons, the Labour Party asked, if Harding's hands were clean, why didn't he hold a public inquiry? I had sufficient confidence in my senior police officers and army commanders to, to accept their view that this didn't happen. And so I was not prepared to uh, run the risk of damage, and very serious damage could have been caused to the morale and confidence of the troops and the police, and particularly the police, by a public, it's a so-called public inquiry, but very seldom in my experience get to the real truth. Harding believed he had a far more effective means of getting Cypriots to talk. In November 1956, he brought in the death penalty for anyone caught with a weapon. Eight Aoka men had been found guilty by the courts and hanged for murder. Now, not only convicted killers, but also the women who took their guns and sped their getaway could hang. Although only one youth was hanged for this offence, with the threat, interrogators could bargain with suspects for information or their lives. And you've got to balance, you've always got a balance of fear in the terrorist's mind between um, what will happen to him if he defects or if he gives information from his own terrorist organization and, and Grievous was particularly ruthless in that respect on the one hand and the fear of punishment through the courts on the other hand. Early in 1957, Harding started to get information and pull in the Aoka men. Hooded informers led British soldiers to Aoka hideouts Leader after leader was surrounded and captured. Grievous's second in command, Gregorius Absentiu, told his men that he would not surrender. To restore the people's faith in Aoka, someone must fight to the death. High in the Troodos Mountains was the hideout used by Absentiu and his four guerrillas. A cave whose entrance was cleverly concealed in the hillside. On the 3rd of March, 1957, it was discovered by British soldiers. So confident were the British that they invited newsreel cameras to film this important capture. It was morning, about six o'clock, from the mov movement of the troops, British troops, and from the noise of the helicopter, 
We suspected that uh, our cave must be betrayed. The British shouted to the guerrillas to surrender. Matrosos and the men came out and gave themselves up, but their leader stayed put. When a British corporal ordered him out, Absentiu shot him dead. The British threw a grenade into the cave and forced Matrosos back in to bring out the body. But he found Absentiu was still alive and joined him. I enter in. I took the Tommy gun. I throw, um, I came out of the cave close. I shoot uh, some bullets and I said, now, now we are through. Come to catch us if you can. And we start the battle. As the captured Aoka men watched, the British threw all they had, tear gas, boulders and explosives, at the cave. The battle raged for six hours. Sometimes uh, I was ready to die. I didn't afraid from death. Sometimes I was um, thinking about life. With the press looking on, British patience came to an end. And then, as men, it was petrol. I said, oh my God, master is petrol. The British set the petrol alight. I was in front of the exit. The flame take me from the face. Instantly, I cover my face, my eyes, and my hands also burn. I feel them burn. I turn again to the... Uh, I saw him in flames and uh, he shouted me, don't be afraid. It was the last word I heard from, uh, from Aksandil. I jump to the cave with the uh, hope that a bullet will Somebody will shoot me. I didn't want to live. And I didn't want to die by, by flames. Matrosos was found lying stunned at the bottom of the hill. They removed some stones from the roof and I saw Xandi was burnt. How did you feel about him? Well, he was, uh, from my side, a great respect. He was a man who was training us uh, to love our country, to 